YouTube. Uh, welcome to the Ultimate Effort uh, Show with Alex. And Joe. <laughs> where uh, our goal is to talk about uh, all the hot topics regarding RPGs, the hobby, uh, especially this guy right here, Index Card RPG. One of yes. our all, one of our all time favorites. Oh, there it is in the favorite. sleek master edition. Yep. And uh, tasty, delicious. I think any time, right, Joe? You have a, a new podcast, right? Um, you kind of want to get a sense of uh, what it's about, what the purpose is, uh, that yep. sort of thing. Who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> right. Dude, like, are these guys even qualified to talk about the hobby? Right. <laughs> Right, and, and and so really for today's inaugural episode, right? Yes, yeah. Um, we really want to talk about three things. So one is, and I sort of want to maybe make this a tradition for our show, uh, right? Yeah. Like, uh, let's yeah. let's talk about origin stories. Like, where did we start with the hobby? Um, yep. Two, we want to talk about our vision for the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like from each of our perspectives. What do we believe in? What do we care about? Where do we see this thing going? And what our hopes are, our hopes and dreams. Yeah, hopes, dreams, accomplishments. Absolutely. What are, what are we doing with this here thing? And, and then finally, uh, to really sort of get into some substance, uh, our third piece for today is we want to talk about creating a character. Yes. Uh, what does that look like? Like, what's your process? Like, Joe, I, I'm curious. I'm genuinely curious about your process. <laughs> I can't wait uh, right? to find out. Where'd all those weirdos come from? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all your weird voices. And, uh, and and that's before, right, we even talk about dice or stats or yeah. opening books or any of that sort of stuff. All right, yeah. So that, that, that little chunk of space before you start putting numbers into it, you know, the, the, the general who, as ab it were. Absolutely. So that's our goal for today. And uh, welcome again to the Ultimate Effort Show with Alex and Joe. And I think we'll just kick off. So, Joe, origin story, man. Like, how did you get into the hobby? Like, where where did right. you start? Well, it kind of started like, see, the sun was dying and Krypton was, was for Earth. <laughs> Crap, that's not mine. Hold on. No, no, I'm kidding. No, so actually it started, a, it was around like third grade, growing up uh, Old Town, San Diego, and a friend of mine, Zadi, I, I'll always remember his name because I thought it was just a cool name because, you know, I'm an eight-year-old kid and here's a buddy of mine whose name has a Z in it. I It was right. cool. Right. But anyway, he, he showed up, uh, he brought in for a show and tell one day. Um, it belonged to his older brother. It was AD&D first edition Fiend Folio because that's all that was, that's what was out, you know, AD&D 1E. This was back 1986. No, no way. Just, just yep. that. Just the fiend folio. And like I, I saw it and I was talking with him afterwards and looking at it all through recess, all through lunch. And I was like, this is a game. I want to play it like eight years old. So that summer, I uh, finally got the player's handbook and just me and my brother. And of course, I made my little brother play. Uh, we didn't have any of the, the fancy dice, the D20s, the D8s or anything. So we scoured the house, broke open the Yahtzee, got the Monopoly. So we played with D6s and we kind of right from the beginning had to like hack the game to be able to play it with what we had oh epic. so yeah and then i mean that's that's kind of where it started it was all because like a buddy of mine brought in this brought in the fiend folio and looking at the pictures and him talking about his brother playing with his brother and it was just like <gasps> like my head exploded i was like i can i can do these i can do these things i can we can run around and be the heroes of these you know stories we've been reading and, and the cartoon shows we've been watching, so I was hooked, man. Oh, uh, that's that's like, awesome. So, so a buttload of it. So you started <laughs> back in '86 with D and D. Where, where did it go from there, Joe? Like, where did you guys just oh, play D and D for a long time, or did you did oh, you gosh, then no. migrate? You know, like a lot of us do in other systems. Yep. Well, uh, for a while we just kind of had that, and then it was uh, it was like beginning of the '90s or whatever um, when the second edition, AD and D second edition, came out. And, you know, uh, we started jumping with that. And then we started seeing these other things. We got into Palladium. Uh, we played Rifts, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with the Rifts, you know, Palladium system. Um, man, we discovered, what was it called? Cinnabar, which is quite possibly like you need like a master's thesis or something in math 
just to like, I mean, no, I, I'm making, I'm, I'm over exaggerating, but like the complexity, like, uh, no, it was great. We played that. We, we got uh, in Earth on back of my shelf. I still have a bunch of, uh, well, I guess they're the more modern, the third edition. Loved the Earth Dawn setting. Like, awesome. I mean, we just branched out everywhere. We found a game from the 70s, Buck Rogers role playing game, and it was absolute rubbish, but we made our own rules up and it was fun. <laughs> but we, we played a lot of different, a uh, lot of different stuff, different settings, still played D&D &D and just kind of jumped back and forth. You know, every week somebody was running something different. So our campaigns were usually broken up because everybody wanted to like, check out my new game. Check this out. You guys ever hear a werewolf, the apocalypse, <laughs> you know, awesome. that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so it was it was like a it was like a golden age where we were just playing anything and everything we could get our hands on, no matter how like obscure or how different it was from what we were used to. We were just we just like we're taking bites out of everything, you know, like the excited kid his first time at a uh, at a buffet and like just all food everywhere. And I want some of this and some of this and some of this and some of this. That's killer. How, how about here in more modern times? Where uh, where have you gone in terms of your hobby taste? Oh man, I've, I, I did do a lot of, uh, I, I played like Rogue Trader, you know, um, it's, I have a teeny YouTube channel. It's got a couple episodes of that. I checked out a lot of like the, um, like Black Hack and Mecha Hack and Into the Odd and, you know, like a lot of these other newer stuff or newer things, um, or I guess newer takes on it, you know, um, Mecha Hack was fun. Uh, AbTab did that up. Uh, and then I discovered, you know, about five, gosh, almost six years now discovered this this icrpg this <laughs> crazy. this crazy hanker inferno yelling at me through the internet about how i need to you know embrace the fact that i can play dnd mo better and <laughs> boom i got the first edition which is back here on the shelf i might actually be point i might be so lucky that i'm actually pointing at it i just know it's one of the light ones mm -hmm. but that's irrelevant yeah like i was just hooked and like icrpg is just where i have been like I, I don't want to say stuck because that's the wrong connotation. I want to say um, where, where I have been um, housed or I don't yeah. know. It treats me right. Most and comfortable. Stick around. Right? Most comfortable. There we yeah, go. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause stuck is not the right thing. Like I'm not like, I like, I, I it's like square peg, square hole. Like dunk. I was like, Hey, I fit here. This is cool. I like it. It's <laughs> oh. comfortable. Oh, that's awesome. That's really yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, so yeah, so oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just man. That, that's outstanding. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So many great games and characters. But I've been yammering on like a uh, you know wild baboon or something over here. Like, yep. what about you, man? <laughs> Where <laughs> where's your origin story start? Yeah. What was the uh, what was the comet you know that sent you to the new planet? You know, it, that spider bite, you know, it's so funny. Um, you know, when I was super young, um, I had a Commodore 64 in, in my room and I started playing the Bard's Tale. Um, and at the time I had no idea that D and D existed. I had no context for it, but I knew all the relevant stuff because of that game. I knew armor class. I, I knew all those sorts of things. All right. So I was maybe 10, 11, somewhere in that time frame. Fast forward a, a couple years, 1987-ish. Uh, my, my really good friend, Andrew, um, and, and to this day, I will always uh, be so grateful to him, uh, introduced me to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, RPG. He, <laughs> uh, he was obsessed with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He read the comics. You know, I, I was not. Uh, so obsessed with TN, TNMT. I, I thought it was pretty cool, um, but he was obsessed with it, and he got the RPG, and we would go over to his house. You know, I, was, I couldn't drive at that time. You know, I was still in junior high. My mom had to drive me, right, uh, to Andrew's <laughs> house, and, and I made my very first character a lion man. You know, part, part man, part lion. That's, that's all I know about him. <laughs> uh, I drew a cool picture of him at that time in my, you know, my spiral-lined notebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and that was my first exposure and that uh that then led very quickly into the batman uh rpg yeah uh it, the the dc heroes uh, uh mm -hmm. game 
we played that, like, we played the crap out of that. Because it was something we could all agree on. Like, not everybody was crazy about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but, man, we love DC right. superheroes. Everybody wanted to be a superhero. Everybody wanted to be a superhero. <laughs> and then we started to, we started to drift. Like, we started to morph that into Marvel. Like, we wanted to, we wanted to play Iron Man. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, so we kind of modified the rules to include all those uh, Marvel heroes, too. Right. Uh, and then, and then from there we got into D and D. Like I think that was the next uh, logical step. Um, I can't even remember. I think it was second edition at that point, Joe, I, or maybe it was AD and D. I I can't remember honestly. Uh, I'm sure we played it wrong, um, but we played the heck out of it. My very first encounter was like as a fighter in a cave with some troll or goblins or something like that, <laughs> and and it was epic. Um, and then, for, and then from there, we got into riffs. We played the crap out of riffs. We played some cyberpunk. We played GURPS. Um, yep. we, we really <laughs> played all those great games. Uh, and then after that, uh, I think we started to come back to D and D more. Mm -hmm. We played some in college. Um, we we then we started to to build our own games. So we one of the first games I created was a Highlander game, and and then and then we did like a Mech Warrior game, which was super yes. cool. <laughs> uh, we played the the Star Wars, the WG Star Wars yes. game in college. You know, still got those yep, on the shelf yep. too. So that was still awesome. the originals. <laughs> yep. So that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then from there, uh, you know, then from there, you know, I, I went to school and kind of dropped out of the hobby a little bit, uh, but came back with third edition, came back with Pathfinder, and then like you, about 2017 or so. 2016, I discovered this Hanker and Fernail guy on the internet, and, and and I was copying. It's funny, I was copying his videos into my journal, like I was writing oh, down nice. his stuff, you know, right. like timers and the three Ds, you know, damage, disruption, and duration. Like I was copying those things right. down, those concepts that later. Well, those are beautiful tools. Like yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but no. I, I have to like just like reaffirm that those are beautiful tools that should be in your gm box yeah they should be Everybody absolutely keep them and then that's what led me to icrpg you know because then that that really codified a lot of those things he was talking about and it just blew my mind i just loved it yeah funnily yeah. enough as you know i'm a huge icrpg <laughs> fanatic i wasn't initially sold on it like there, so there's oh, an interesting no. tidbit like there were some parts of it i was like i don't i don't like this effort piece <laughs> you know right and, and i don't like the fact you have to fight with every chest are they all locked you know that that kind of stuff you know but it finally grew on me and mm -hmm. man i haven't looked back i loved every second of index card rpg if you don't have it i highly recommend you get it yes yes you should whether modifius for these you know for the deluxe hardbacks um or drive through rpg for the uh quick and dirty black and white print the pdf whichever yeah it's really yeah. great so but, that's a that's a little bit about my story and so i've been playing and dming golly 30 plus years now and and joe i know it's the same for you yep yep 30 something years i do the math but you know it's i haven't had enough coffee for math <laughs> if i could get a dice roll with it the math would be so much easier mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it for sure well hey so that's our origin story, and that kind of leads yeah. into, you know, kind of next, like maybe where we're headed, and, and that is, yeah. you know, what is our vision for this uh, for the show for this podcast, right? Right. Um, do you want to kick us off and talk about your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, like mainly, like the the thoughts I had about it, and why I think it's such a wonderful idea is, uh, you know, I mean, we we've all seen, and and I'm definitely not knocking them. D and D has a lot of great things. It's brought a lot of people into this hobby it's given this hobby a huge amount of exposure which lets us get more new people to like you know just like just like your friends when you're kids hey you want to play this new game i got that's my new game but anyway like the the thing i'm looking at you know or or where i hope to go is like a lot of these other places that have all these bigger bigger folks and bigger names and and bigger voices talking about their favorite game I'd like to talk about my favorite game and Alex's favorite game. And, you know, just look at um, all the different ways that I've learned and improved myself that, you know, maybe this wisdom can help others learn and improve and, and uh, answer questions. And, you know, um, I'd also like, I, I know, you know, me and Alex have talked like, like to, would like to see 
fifth of her birthday. Trip it over my mouth. Um, would like to see, you know, some community involvement, you know, some questions from, from viewers, listeners, um, you know, you know, people that we should be, you know, interviewing possibly, you know, things like that. We'd like to, we'd like to shine the spotlight around, you know, just like the way I run my table. We, we like to give everybody a chance to get some spotlight and that's like a beautiful thing. And that's kind of like the direction I, I, I see, you know, or I guess my thought on it, I should say. I'm rambling again. Nah, man, that's that's all perfect. Yeah. yeah so but yeah, how about you? Like, where where do you see, you know, where do you see the the accomplishments aimed at and such, and, and uh, where are we going? Man? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, Joe, it's uh, it's interesting, right? You know, you and I were both. Uh, you know, we talked about our origin stories. You know, we were very, both very lucky um, that we had we had people that we knew, close friends, who got us into the hobby. Yep. Right. Uh, you know, your, your buddy and my buddy, Andrew, you know, kind of got us into the hobby and, and started this this lifelong passion for tabletop gaming. Yes. Uh, I, I think, you know, if I if I could carve out sort of a vision for this, uh, you know, because it's been a long and twisty road for me. Um, and, and it's been a long road in terms of developing my DM toolbox mm-hmm. um, that I think I can talk about. Um and that that experience, you know, I would love to share that with other folks. Uh, and if that can be even a just fractionally helpful to somebody, uh, I think it would be it would be totally worth it. Uh, I know you've DM for me. You've got a ton of awesome tools in your toolbox. Uh, I would like to think I've got a you know I've got a weird collection, uh, okay. a weird assortment of tools uh, that I use when I DM. Right. It's it, it's amazing every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, if I could pass those along to other folks, um, I, I would love to do that. Um, in, in terms of the hobby, I think there's a lot of confusion about DMing out there, right? And and when you say, hey, I'm going to DM a game, right? If you're brand new to it, especially, or you haven't done it a whole lot, it feels like this oppressive burden. And it's this sort of... Almost neb- daunting. Yeah, daunting. And it's this nebulous sort of practice, right? Like, like, what do you do? And if you, if you see people like on Facebook or wherever, like, Hey, I'm going to restart my DM, you know, my first you know time in the chair. Uh, what, what advice do you have? It's all this like nebulous advice. It's always stuff like, well, have yeah. fun, you know, like, well, <laughs> we'll build a world. Like, Oh my God. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible advice. You only have to do every single thing, but you're going to do great. Good luck. Yeah. It's right. Like- yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm jumping. Uh, no, absolutely. And so for me, what I want to do is reduce DMing down to a purposeful set of behaviors uh, where people can be strategic and hopefully a bit more sophisticated th- than the way I played when I was really young. You know, like we did some dumb stuff. And, and I, I think to the detriment of some tables, right? Like 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 rub people the wrong way, rules lawyering, like all, you know, murder, hoboing, all the dumb stuff. Yes. Every rule out there that, that you know, people eschew, like, I've broken all those rules probably at some point, but I've learned from it. Yeah. And I think today the, the more modern approach, I, I think if I can coin it that or, or mm-hmm. view the hobby that way, is to be a b- bit more purposeful about DMing. Yeah. So, so I want to pass on that philosophy and that structure and practical concrete tips that people can use to build their DM toolbox and to get better at their games and hopefully have more satisfying games. So, so I, I truly hope that's an, that's a product of, of our discussions here. Um, and then the other pieces you alluded to, I want to bring on some members of our community, like spotlight some of these cool uh, ladies and gents uh, in our hobby who are so, so good. Um, and others, ladies and gents and others. Yep. Inclusive, inclusive Thank you. Everybody. Yes. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know. Yes. I just... Popped it, but like for for everybody, for everybody. That's it. Everybody in the community, um, whatever your background or origin, Mm -hmm. we want you here, and we want to talk to you and and find out a bit about you and what you're up to in terms of the hobby. And I think that just makes us better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and then uh, and then honestly, the only other piece, you know, in in terms of the of the the vision, our sort of mission statement, uh, you know, so we have making you sort of better DM. We have community involvement. Is you know, Mm -hmm. we want to tackle some of those tough burning questions that you have. Um, And so rather than it being our podcast, we want to make it 
you know, sort of your podcast, those of you out there in the community, yes. yeah. you know, what are the issues that are driving you crazy? What can we help you with? And, and if we don't know the answer, we'll, we'll find somebody who does. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I think that's a fertile ground. So I know I've talked a, a ton, Joe, but, but those really are no. the, uh, the, the big pieces. Any follow up on any of those? Um, dang, I guess my only follow up is uh, for anybody that's familiar with either of us in Discord's chats, you know, Facebook's other gaming groups, um, just like in text form, Alex says in a much better and clearer way the same things I've been saying. Like, <laughs> so it's what that's all I got to add is like, I'm glad he was talking because I kind of like sputtered and rambled through a lot of that. But more succinct. It was beautiful. Like it was well said. I love it, man. I I, I make it up as I go. Right. That's <laughs> that's my secret, Cap. I'm always winging like, it. Let me just you know. I make it up as I go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we talked about our origins. We've talked about our vision for our podcast and what we hope yes. to accomplish. And I hope that that resonates for folks out in the community. Mm. Let's get into some meat. Here, Joe. Yes, let's <laughs> yeah. get some meat. Yeah, for folks who couldn't see, he did this like gnawing on a on a tough piece of venison there for us. Um, yeah. Let's talk about creating a character. Like, like this is the yeah. beginning, right? You know, if you're if you're you know behind the sheet. Yeah, right. If you're behind your character sheet, right. How do you go? How do you do this thing, Alex? I'm brand new to this game, man. I just, some buddies of mine were telling me about this ICRPG um, <clears throat> product placement. And uh, I'm sitting down, I'm looking, there's some, there's just so much cool stuff. How do I, how do you go about making a character? Yeah, absolutely. Help um, me out here. What's, where are we, where are we going? How are we making a character? Yeah. And, and so this is a piece where, you know, no matter what RPG you play, Right, I think this could be beneficial to you uh, th because this is before, right? Before you ever start statting anything, before you ever start opening a book, mm -hmm. and, and I think Joe, you know, we talked beforehand. I think there are a lot of people out there that that's where they begin. Like, they, yeah, they start going, well, what are my options? You know, what, um, you know, what, what's the best bonus I could take? <laughs> right, right? And, well, and even before that, like it does, like every single RPG system I pick up, if it's new. First thing I do is go to the character sheet to just to look and you know find out what my things are because I'm making a character first thing to help me understand the game. Yep, absolutely. And that and I don't think oh. that that's necessarily wrong, but I think right. where I'd like to take people is you know like stop thinking about numbers. Numbers <laughs> and right. maximizing your character mm -hmm. first because I you know Joe, I played with you for a long time and you have some of the richest uh, most enjoyable, likable uh, characters out there. Uh, you know, Rongar in our Goblins game is so great. You know, Hinar in terms of the community, yeah. it's just been a fan favorite for a ton of years. Yeah. It, you know, it was it, a fun character to play too. Man, you've had so many to. good ones. <laughs> and and I I think what makes those characters so rich is you didn't start with, well, hey, what's my best bonus going to be? So, and for me, it's the same thing. Now, I, I do sometimes flip through the book for maybe inspiration, you know, like, yeah. hey, what haven't I played in a while or whatever. Right. 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 But I tend to step away from that and, and engage in more of a creative process. And, and really, I use two methods. I kind of use them interchangeably. The first one is I'm going to look for a cool piece of art. Yes, yes, yes. Right? So so that's the <laughs> yes. first one. Like whether I start cartwheeling through Google and let Google images, you know, like I'll do fantasy character mm -hmm. concept art as my search yes. and see what comes <laughs> up, right? And start looking for cool characters or like, you know, hey, I haven't played a fighter in a while. Okay, let's look at fighters. Or hey, I haven't played a thief in a while. Look, let's look for some cool like fantasy thief concept art out there in Google, right? Or like here's a good example. Most recently in our Goblin game, right, my – my little goblin thief Keck, right? I just found that cool piece of Paizo art, right? Where he's right? <laughs> he's just this little childlike goblin in a like a stolen top hat, and he's got a human right? shirt. Most definitely stolen. <laughs> yeah, he's got a human shirt. 
he's tied around his body as a cape, <laughs> you know, and then he's got this jagged piece of metal he's picked up as a sword, you know, and I saw that piece of art and I'm like, you know, I know who this character is, you know, and, right. if, you know, the, the fun part about him is, right, I didn't take any of the usual loot. I took a chicken, a hairpin, <laughs> and some children's blocks, <laughs> right. right, and a poisonous toad. Right, right. and like, the toad. The toad, right, so these are the things... That just from that piece of art, like I envision, okay, he was kind of childlike. He had all of his stuff, his stolen stuff, you know, kind of like that movie, The Borrowers, right? You remember The Borrowers from back in the <laughs> yeah. day? Right. So, so that was sort of my inspiration for Keck. Movie it, version of The Littles. <clears throat> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it yeah. all it all came from a cool piece of art. And that character is freaking awesome. Oh, thanks, Every man. Every time Keck, 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 Keck. <laughs> And he rubs his he rubs his toad on the side of his knife and stealths. Yeah. That, oh, oh. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And I did. Uh, so I mean, there's there's great stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm like stepping away. Whoop. Absolutely. Yeah. And no no set of rules or no character sheet or no numbers like gave me that. Right. Yeah. And and that's the piece that I think makes him so memorable and enjoyable. And it all started from a cool piece of art. That, you know, that just resonated with me. The other thing that I do, because um, I spend a lot of time uh, driving, uh, the, the other thing that I do is I start trying out funny voices in the car. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if, uh, if you remember our Altered State game with Chuck, you know, um, one of the things that I did, you know, for, uh, for my guy Ted, you know, mm-hmm. Ted was this English guy, right? But he had this very thick Cockney accent. <laughs> and the whole idea was, is I wanted a guy who you couldn't really understand, but you also, but it's not like he was speaking just gibberish. He was speaking words, but you, yeah, you know, you and just I, didn't know the slang, the meaning behind it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So it I was, was in so the, good. I was in the car and I just channeled my inner Jason Statham, you know, like uh, lock, stock and two smoking barrels. <laughs> you know, like hello, sunshine, like you know, like that kind of stuff, right? Yep. And and, and just start kind of riffing these phrases that this character might say in this <laughs> in this in this Cockney accent, you know, like so so he he goes down to the he goes down to the pub and gets the best Aristotle of this ping pong tiddly, like you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. My apologies to any of our English listeners who think I'm you know a complete Loader moron. Again. Yeah, but no, these are things we have to look up over here because our <laughs> slang isn't as like fun. We yeah, don't have right. any like the old rhyming slangs. Like we're researching this crap. Yeah, but I found that to be so fun, right? As a character concept, um, yeah. and, and just started practicing these strip phrases in the car and just laughing to myself. And then, um, you know, our buddy Xander from the council, you know, he he would be in the car with me sometimes, <laughs> and I'd be bouncing some of these lines off of him, and then he'd riff off of me. <laughs> And we'd almost do it like improv. Yep. So I would just say cool piece of art method or even just creative headspace, visualization, or even an improv method where you really kind of try the character on. Like you you zip up that character suit, wear it around <laughs> right. for a little while, and try it out. Right. Uh, the, those are, nobody sees your zipper. <laughs> yeah, right. Like those are probably the two methods. Before I even open the book, before I even start thinking about statting this person up, uh, you know, because Ted, as you know, Ted ended up being a very kind of muscle man, could soak yeah. up a lot of damage, had this big bionic a arm where he, where he just liked to punch <laughs> stuff, right? <laughs> right. But none of that came first. All of that came yeah. later after the visual, visualization. Mm-hmm. So what what are your thoughts, Joe? Like, how do, how do you approach it? Are, are they similar? Are you different? Like, they're, they're quite similar. There's a lot of very, very strong similarities because I do. First thing, I'm looking at art. I'm, I'm hitting Google, I'm looking through stuff, deviant art, you know, and I, I like to use part of the same taglines, like for concept art, you know, like my search, my keywords will be very similarly, you know, uh, fantasy, fantasy fighter or fantasy wizard, you know, concept art as part of those keywords, because it, it I don't know, it opens up a lot of extra stuff. Yep. Um, but yeah, I look for cool art. Like, I don't even care what exactly they are i'm looking at i just look for cool art until one of them like just kind of gets me and i'm like oh okay that's kind of goofy looking 
this guy is tall and lanky. Clearly he's an old man, you know, and he's got this big straw hat. He kind of looks like, like maybe he's an herbalist. Maybe he's a wandering pilgrim of some sort. And then I just kind of like, I, I start going with that. Like, I, I really kind of start thinking like, you know, who are they at that point? Like, cause I, I don't, I don't ever want to go direct like vanilla on a trope. I like to just do a little twist on a trope. You know, tropes are good. Like everybody understands them for a reason or an easy way in, but then just to make the character interesting, or I guess maybe feel a little more alive. I, I kind of look to twist like, with the scrawny old man with his mustache and big frizzy beard and yeah, right. you know floppy woolen hat, you know the first image I saw of Hanar right. or who became Hanar was just this black and white pencil image. Super, and like I was, I was doing those thoughts like super skinny, yeah, super skinny, like hill, and, hill man stuff. <laughs> yep, you know? and I, that's that's exactly where I started thinking of like this guy is definitely out wandering through the woods and stuff. I mean his clothes are kind of like torn and ratty. Like that's probably from cutting through bushes, getting snags here and there. And like, I just, that was the vision I had is that, you know, he's probably wandering through these woods going like, those mushrooms are edible. I'll put those in my pack. You know, oh, the bark on this tree can help with, uh, you know, curing a fever. I'm going to take some <laughs> of that. You know, like I, I just started thinking like, okay, so he's like some kind of herbalist or He's looking to help people. He's a healer of sorts. Right. Why is he wandering? Well, awesome. maybe he's on a penance. Okay. Okay. And like the things all started falling together, like falling in place. And he ended up becoming a healer, like, you know, magical ability and such. And, and it all started, you know, and that was no numbers or anything like that. I didn't think about what my stats were going to be. I didn't even know what race he was. I just knew that this, I think the art was a human. Um, it ended up after checking that, you know, hey, being one of these wild men, you know, these tree folk, you know, that seems the most natural thing for him, just because of how I already saw him in my mind. He seemed like one of these hill folk, these wild men, kind of a thing. Well, well I'm curious, though, yeah. how, how did you settle on the 13th warrior Antonio <laughs> Banderas voice? Well, because um, that was actually looking the or at the map of Alfheim. There was a desert region and I figured in his pilgrimage, he's probably wandered a long way. And that originally, maybe he was from like the hills. He was, uh, he was one of these tall, you know, there's mountains and some of the dunes. And I was thinking this hill folk came from those regions. Oh, that's awesome. And one of the most watched movies in my house, aside from Galaxy Quest or Three Amigos, <laughs> is 13th Warrior. And so I was just watching it and I'm like, he's a displaced person in a different culture and you know yeah antonio banderas's you know uh, arabic accent is flavored with a little bit of spanish but it sounded good and it gave enough of a foreign element that i was like okay this could kind of fit for this wandering pilgrim that he shouldn't really sound like he's from any one place and so the next thing i knew hinar was just walking into the town like and that is how it, that's how it happened and that was hinar like i don't know it just happened like it just fell into place and, and again all that happened before you ever statted him up yep and and like you you know I, I um whether i was driving and using windshield time for trying to find the voice and who the character was and like to really get to feel him out um it, it's either that kind of thing or while i'm doing the dishes sometimes if i'm in the grocery store my brain will be going on it and i'll just be pushing and all of a sudden Ah, yes, that's exactly what they need. I was almost out of ketchup. And like, <laughs> yeah, all people walk by. Spare moments. Like, yeah. And like, you know, I, I don't care. It's just, it's having fun. Yeah. People absolutely. look, just smile. Like, don't, don't stress on if you do it in front of other people. Because you're going to be doing it in front of other people. Oh, that's it. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I think. That's, that's really it. I think if there's an overriding message here, that, you know, because we see this, right? Like, people are just like, well, you know, like, what does the book tell me I could be? Or what does the book tell me I could play? And the reality is all that piece from the book comes later for me. Yep. Like, you know, I, as I said, sometimes I flip through mm -hmm. and to, to try to generate ideas, but, but more so. And my invitation and what I would encourage folks to do is use this. Use your imagination. Use your creativity. You know, mm -hmm. Cycle through some art or, or some, some media that you enjoy to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, give you that, that, 
you know, that, that uh, cartwheeling effect into, uh, mm -hmm. into brainstorming. Yeah, definitely. If something hooks you, like, give it a moment, pause there. And, you know, if there's an image that you're like, you know, oh, it stops you from scrolling or looking through, like, look at it for a minute, ask yourself some questions about it. You know, why does he have this? Why do they have this item? Or where are they walking to, depending on what the art looks like? You know, they're in a battle pose. Why are they in a battle pose? And start think, just ask yourself some questions about it and, you know, see what pops up. Maybe it's one of those things where, you know, you're stuck in the flypaper and you're really into this idea. Like it, you're like, whoa, whoa, well, you've already got a character, like run on it. Yeah. Absolutely. And if not, save it and then keep going until you get something that hooks and grabs. Oh, well, that's it. Yeah. That would be the other thing, right? If I find a piece of art or I find a voice that doesn't quite fit, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'll keep a piece, but then I'll move on and, and try to find something yeah. that's a better fit. You know, yeah. like I did that with Master Graz. I probably went through a hundred <laughs> images until I found the one that I was just like, you know what? This is Master Graz. This is him. Like, and that character was amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, <like> man. <laughs> thanks. Thank you so much. But that would be oh, my man. invitation and challenge to folks. You mm -hmm. know, use your noggin, use your imagination, whether it's daydreaming or looking at art or trying out funny voices. Or, or, yeah. or, you know, even maybe just pantomiming, pantomiming, you know, what would my character be like? And really kind of put yourself in that character's skin first before yeah. you hit the numbers. I think if you do that, you're probably going to have a richer, more fulfilling character, you yeah. know. Yep, get inspired by it. Like, see what kind of, see what little story pops up based on that art. Like, it, it's a great, great way. Uh, it's, it's actually funny enough, even recommended in the icrpg book of find a cool piece of art that's it and and that's something like funny enough i'd been doing long before you know icrpg came along but but uh it was codified into that of it's okay to do this it's okay to do this do the thing yeah so check out some art do the hobby yep that, that's your homework for the weekend yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah make it come up with a cool character concept I mean, we, just based on art no stats yeah we'd love to hear about it uh for yep. sure and maybe we'll talk about it next time yep so so guys let us know down below yeah so guys <laughs> you know joe and i are doing this as a passion project just because we mm -hmm. love rpgs uh we love talking about the hobby you know in terms of putting this out uh youtube is just going to be a platform uh we're going to look and maybe doing the audio on an actual podcast platform but the reality is, in terms of liking, subscribing, I know it says that. Uh, I, I really don't care. You know, if you like us, leave us a like. Great. <laughs> if you don't, yeah. man, move on. Uh, you man. know, <laughs> we're just not for you. Um, but uh, I, we, the reality is, we're just we're not going to stop making videos or stop having you know discourse and conversation about RPGs. Yeah. You know, because of that kind of stuff, we, we really don't care. Like yeah. we're we're just in this <laughs> to talk and hopefully help you a little bit. And, and maybe and have some fun interaction. Yeah, have some fun interaction with the community. Yep. In it for love of the game and hopefully to help. Yep, hopefully to help. Knowledge, knowledge should be free, so we will freely give what we know. Yep. And, and, and like Alice mentioned, we'll ask if we don't know the answer. That's it. And showcase <laughs> some cool people who are not just us. You know, like we, we definitely want to talk to some cool cats in the community. All right. I think that's all that we have. We're super yep. grateful for your time if you've made it this far. Indeed, indeed. And next time, maybe we'll have a special guest. That's my hope. I, I don't mm. want to let the cat out of the bag, Joe, because I, but I think maybe I have right. somebody I know who might be willing to come chat with us. Right. And that could be great. That could be great. Because yep. letting the cat out of the bag too early it is just going to knock over every one of these books <laughs> and some of this terrain and stuff. So, like, we'll just, you, you don't even, bags, we'll let them chill. You don't even own a cat. <laughs> I don't even own a cat. <laughs> It would just show up. We don't, thump. We don't let the dog out of the back. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but hey, so next time, maybe special guest. And yep. then we're going to build on this idea of character creation in terms mm -hmm. of uh, our behind the sheet segment uh, from a mm -hmm. player standpoint. We're going to talk about then statting that character up. So we're going to take you yep. to that next step. Yep. After. Moving, moving right along. With yep. Some and, and then we're going to talk about. A D, hot burning DM topic behind the screen. What to do if you're if you're DMing? We'll give you one of those tools. That's all next time, guys. Thanks so much, Joe. Any other parting comments? Oh boy, I guess just until next time. 
take my hero coin and roll ultimate. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs>